water from precipitation may seep into the ground. Instead of seeping deeper and reach the underground water storage, some of them will be absorbed by a plant via its root system. Water does not stay inside the living plant for a long time. It is eventually released into the atmosphere in the form of water vapor. This process is also known as transpiration. The atmospheric vapor pressure, temperature, wind, light intensity, and plant itself are among the factors influencing the transpiration rate. Within a catchment, the location where plants present does not only release water back to the atmosphere via transpiration. On the ground where they stand, water also experiences evaporation. Under this scenario, we can conveniently lump both processes into one and call it evapotranspiration. When the soil provides sufficient amount of water and the needs of vegetation are fully met, the resulting evapotranspiration from a region would be potential evapotranspiration PET. This is a scenario where climatic factors are more important than anything else in affecting the rate of evapotranspiration. On the other hand, the real evapotranspiration that takes place is defined as actual evapotranspiration AET. In hydrological study, PET is used most of the time. It can be calculated using various equations. Penman's equation is one of the most popular equations we use to estimate the millimeter of potential evapotranspiration per day. In this equation, we need to determine the value of parameters A, Ea, Gamma, and Hn. A is the slope of the saturation vapor pressure against temperature curve. We may calculate it using the following equation. Ea is dependent on the wind speed at 2 meter above ground level, saturated vapor pressure at mean air temperature, and actual vapor pressure. You may refer to our video titled Estimating Evaporation for the methods to calculate these parameters. Note that the unit of wind speed here is now kilometer per day instead of kilometer per hour. Gamma is defined as psychrometric constant and it is taken as 0.49 mm of mercury per degree Celsius. Hn is defined as net radiation in the unit of millimeter of evaporable water per day. It is the difference between incoming solar radiation into a surface of reflection and back radiation from that surface. The incoming radiation is a function of the site's latitude and the period of year we study. The albedo varies with the types of surface. The back radiation, on the other hand, is affected by the air temperature and vapor pressure. Overall, the duration of bright sunshine detects how much radiation a region can receive. When determining Hn, the following tables can be used to aid us in approximating the solar radiation and possible sunshine hours. Let's look into an example on the implementation of Penman equation. The site we study is located at a latitude of 25 degrees north and 55 meters above sea level. It is covered with dense natural vegetation. Data for the mean wind speed at 2 meters above ground level, temperature, relative humidity, and average sunshine duration are available for the past 12 months. What would be the evapotranspiration in November? The mean air temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. The saturated vapor pressure would be 19.84 mm of mercury. Then, given relative humidity of 65%, the actual vapor pressure would be 12.9 mm of mercury. The value of A, on the other hand, is found to be 1.21 mm of mercury per degree Celsius. Up next, 
the solar radiation for this site in November is equivalent to 10.15 mm of evaporable water per day. Also, the site is supposed to receive 10.9 hours worth of sunshine for the study month. For dense natural vegetation, we assume it is close ground crops and this gives us the albedo of 0.25. From these parameters, the incoming solar radiation into the reflection surface is 5.271 mm of evaporable water per day. Meanwhile, the back radiation equals to 2.953 mm per day. As a result, the net radiation will be 2.318 mm of evaporable water per day. The calculation of parameter Ea is more straightforward. By substituting the wind speed and vapor pressure values, it would be 4.396 mm per day. At this point, we are good to estimate the PET. Under these conditions, the site potentially released 2.916 mm of water per day via evapor transpiration. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please share it with your friends. We'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.